Yes. Okay. Thank you. So uh, before to start with uh, to to show these two jokes, I would just uh, stress and uh, remember a few uh, very important ideas about uh, uh, Silvox theory that I know everyone knows uh, among us, uh, but are uh, useful to uh, to introduce this kind of the, the reason of this uh, this joke. We know that. Uh, Thanking uh, Thomas Sibiok, uh, semiotics is emerging as a global semiotic from a global perspective. And uh, we know that uh, science and life, uh, uh, under the point of view, under the uh, key lecture of Sibiok, are uh, coincident. In, um, in the Sibiok idea of uh, semiotics, uh, modeling is uh, pivotal and important. Uh, uh, so much uh, that uh, he, uh, we know uh, describe three kinds of uh, uh, of modeling system. There is uh, uh, this uh, kind of uh, primary modeling system that Sibiok call uh, uh, language, and this kind of language uh, is uh, uh, of every kind of uh, uh, life uh, and semiosis uh, system. And is a kind of combinatory syntactic uh, uh, system. On this uh, modeling system, uh, there is uh, another, uh, that is the secondary system, that is the, um, the one that we could call uh, speech and is a, a peculiar human uh, fact, it's a peculiar human uh, things. On this uh, uh, secondary modeling system, there is the, uh, we know, of uh, tertiary uh, modeling system, that is the culture. The culture with its uh, myths, with its symbols, with its, uh, with its uh, um, uh, possibility to, uh, to joke, the possibility uh, to reinterpret everything uh, again and again and again. And uh, Sibiok uh, uh, extended this, uh, the boundaries of, uh, you know, in this, uh, this kind of approach, Sibiok uh, extended the, the, the boundaries of uh, the traditional uh, science study to uh, um, every thing that is uh, living. And uh, um, the important uh, issue to, to remind is that, uh, um, to, to, to remind uh, to my uh, to, to this introduction is that the uh, verbal uh, science is a uh, Sibiok um, called the, the parse prototo error error uh, when uh, someone uh, in this kind of, of uh, doing this kind of uh, error when someone uh, in, uh, in the discipline, uh, in semiotic discipline, use a part uh, to represent uh, the wall. This uh, uh, is, uh, in a way, um, the thing that we call a glottocentric problem, and the thing that we call, uh, for extension of a glottocentric problem, the, the thing that we call uh, anthropocentric uh, idea uh, and uh, we know that uh, on this uh, field of uh, studies Sibiok uh, 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 propose uh, this kind of theories I would uh, this uh, before to give the, the words to professor Petrilli professor Ponzio I would uh, to uh, share uh, some uh, books that are okay. For example, we have one second, sorry. Potete vedere la condizione o vedete me? No, non vedete la. E adesso? Sì. 
Okay, there is this kind of uh, this book. This is uh, one book, uh, if I remember well, is uh, about 2001, no? It's uh, 2001, Semiotica dell'Io, uh, by uh, Thomas Sibioc, uh, Susan Petrilli, and uh, Augusto Ponzio. In uh, this uh, book, um, the, according to mainly Persian and Morris theories, there is a, a uh, analysis uh, about uh, the subjectivity and the uh, subjectivity of, uh, that is made by uh, verbal science, but even uh, non-verbal, the uh, system immunitary, immunitary system, mm -hmm. immunitary system. Another book uh, that uh, we could uh, remind is Glo Semiotica Globale by uh, Danisi, uh, Marcel Danisi, uh, Susan Petrilli, and Augusto Ponzi, with an introduction uh, made by uh, Thomas, Thomas Silvio. This is a kind of, of uh, um, reflection and translation of some part uh, and uh, of uh, the global semiotic of Thomas Silvio. Another book that I would show is uh, this by John Billy, Susan Petrilli, and Augusto Ponzio, and uh, this uh, uh, global uh, semiotic by Thomas Hitch. It's funny to see this uh, cover with the famous hand by Michelangelo of creation that touch a kind of uh, what can be this uh, monocellular, monocellular kind of life. That is a monocellular kind of life made, uh, it's a fun monocellular, so it's uh, like uh, Aquilone, like, how, how is Aquilone in height, uh, uh, that uh, look, uh, the, the finger of the man. And uh, we, uh, we can uh, we can say that uh, this uh, formula semiotic uh, global uh, global semiotic uh, is intended even to uh, describe uh, uh, the semiotic uh, animal that is uh, human and to underline the fact that uh, um, global semiotic uh, offers a, a point a meeting point and uh, a kind of observation uh, for the studies of the life of science and the science of life in a, in a, in a kind of line of, uh, which is the major tradition in semiotic sibioc uh, approach to sign life presuppose uh, is critic uh, is a, a strong critic to anthropocentric and glottocentric semiotic uh, theory and practice and uh, for this uh, critic, for this, uh, this kind of error that uh, the author, the American author called the Pars Pro Toto error, I think uh, fits really well uh, is, uh, its joke. Uh, I think it's uh, useful to, to show this kind of uh, joke. For example, um, this uh, uh, joke uh, about uh, the dead cat. This uh, joke, Sibioc uh, loved to, to tell to, to his listener, to his friends. And um, the point of this joke is that it is not possible for uh, all the jokes of uh, this kind of all Sibioc's joke is not possible to explain only by uh, words, only by verbal signs. Uh, we need to explain uh, something more, uh, and uh, we need to, to explain with uh, gesture, we, we need to buy body or by uh, drawings. In this case, we have a kind of hybrid uh, work because uh, Sibioc himself uh, explained the joke, then uh, uh, asked uh, to uh, someone to made the, the wife, if I don't remember, the wife made the picture, this picture, the wife made the, the pictures. Uh, of, uh, to explain this joke, and uh, uh, another one, uh, in the case of uh, uh, Luciano Ponzio, made uh, drawings to explain this joke. For example, we can say the uh, joke of uh, uh, dead cat. There is uh, 
a man who is driving uh, his car uh, in the street uh, and uh, is uh, driving too fast and uh, runs over a cat. So the man uh, wonder who's this car and go around in the neighborhood to ask uh, to, to find for the, the owner of the cat. He stops uh, to search for and apologize to the cat's owner. He stops at the house of an old lady thinking she must have been the owner. He said to her, Madam, I'm very sorry indeed, but I think I killed your cat. The madam asks, asks him, uh, how was uh, this cat? And uh, this is a thing, how was this cat? He tried to describe uh, how was this cat. The old lady said, no, young man, I meant what did the cat look like? And he made like this, I think. And this was how the, uh, the cat, what did the cat look like before you ran over him? And uh, the man made like this. This is a picture of Sibiok. Try to explain in uh, how was the face of the cat before to be killed. Then there is another joke. Then that is uh, this one. An American asks uh, an Italian, why do Italians have short necks? And the Italian answer without word. And uh, the joke can work only in this way, no? but it's not working my video there is something that is not working okay suggest okay ah un attimo so sorry okay vabbè i ruin this joke because not was not working with the, the camera so why american uh, why italian have uh, has a, a short neck and big and the, the italian answer i don't know <laughs> so i finished to, to this presentation i give the the words to someone who will explain better than me all the the theory of uh, Sibio. thank you Eh, Dari, ma tu devi mostrare le foto nella nostra relazione? Ah, ok. Um, thank you, Dario. Um, can you hear me? Se vediamo. Come faccio a sapere se mi sento, no? Um, così. Ti sentiamo benissimo. Che succede? Il Ciao. microfono chiuso, vedi? Ah, eh. aveva aperto. Ah, no, qua forse... Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Oh. Dai, devi interrompi la condivisione. Che ha detto? Aspetta. Interrompi la condivisione. Ecco, ciao, me li so. Tu mi senti? Sì. Quindi posso... Posso iniziare? Sì. Ok. Um, so, hello everybody. Um, it's lovely to be here to celebrate Tom Sibiok together. Uh, and uh, I wish to thank Paul Cobley uh, for organizing the initiative. Um, so, yes, um, the whole point of those uh, jokes, the hybrid jokes from um, Tom's hybrid jokes um, is connected to his global semiotics um, and to his critique through global semiotics 
um, of uh, the anthropocentric and glottocentric approach uh, to the sign of life, uh, to the life of signs. Um, uh, so uh, there's, there's an interesting line of development which goes, which we have evidenced on various occasion, which goes from Charles Peirce to Charles Morris through to uh, Tom Seabiock. Um, and Charles Peirce had claimed that the universe is perfused with signs. So Charles Morris, uh, after Peirce, uh, looks at the conjunction of signs and life uh, and talks about um, organic signs, the relationship uh, therefore of language, verbal language to the realm of life. Um, and then we have Seabiok, uh, Seabiok, um, um, Morris, Charles Morris was his uh, teacher. He had uh, Thomas Seabiot had gone to uh, semiotic classes, I think it was the first class ever in the United States uh, held by um, Charles Morris. Um, so the, the point is that um, um, according to this line of development, uh, anthroposemiosis is clearly a, a section, a small section of semiosis of sign life in the sign universe. Uh, and um, uh, it's important that when we uh, deal with uh, and investigate anthroposemiosis uh, and in particular anthroposociosemiosis, that we be aware um, of the context of the larger context and the interconnections. Um, like all other animals belonging to the sphere of zoosemiosis, from a biosemiotic perspective, human beings too communicate, says Seabiot, mostly through nonverbal signs. So this is the interesting point. Uh, despite the, uh, the presence, uh, even when we speak, uh, the overwhelming presence of verbal signs, uh, according to Seabiok's view, even then, uh, it's the nonverbal signs that predominate, that proliferate. Um, so therefore, he um, underlines, and we with him, the relation of interdependency, of dependency, I would say, of verbal meaning upon the nonverbal. Um, even voluntary communication, uh, says Tom Seabiot, is wholly subtended by endosemiotic processes, uh, such as those relatively, as uh, Dario mentioned, the immunitary system and the neural systems. So, um, uh, a, a major point in uh, Seabiot's global semiotics is his critique, as I was saying, of anthropocentricism and of glottocentricism, uh, which um, has in incredible consequences uh, um, from the point of view uh, of uh, the way uh, we look at, let's say, the order in the universe, the, the, the order of life in the universe, it becomes very, very clear that um, even though man may be at the center in a sense, in the sense uh, as a semiotic animal, uh, there is no room whatsoever for arrogance, uh, no room whatsoever for uh, uh, lack of consideration, let's say, of all life forms on, uh, on Earth, given simply the relation of total interrelationship and therefore total interdependency between human life forms and all other life forms over the planet. Um, Let's have a look. I'll, um, so the expression semiotic animal, which we introduced in a book with uh, John Dearly, alludes to the human being as the only animal capable not only of using signs and so of semiosis, we make the distinction between the various levels of semiosis, semiosis and metasemiosis, the capacity to reflect upon signs, uh, which is a capacity that Charles 
Morris had already evidenced uh, with a paper entitled Signs About Signs About Signs. Uh, he was already alluding to this multiplication of different levels of semiosis, direct semiosis and semiosis to think about, to intervene upon uh, semiosis. Um, so with John Dealey, we believe that the formula semiotic animal effectively displaces the modern formula res cogitans, shifting the focus from the rational animal uh, to the reasonable animal, uh, that is to reason based on uh, alterity, reasonableness. Uh, in, in Peirce's view of things, is reason uh, which um, recognizes, acknowledges the centrality of alterity, uh, and therefore uh, we translate responsibility. Um, so, um, from the back cover of the semiotic animal, um, we, we make the, um, the observation that from opposite shores of the Atlantic, uh, the three of us, the three authors, uh, commonly involved with the ubiquitous work uh, constellating around the notion of human beings as semiotic animals and converging as well towards inaugurating a new phase in the international development of semiotics, namely an understanding of the unique responsibilities for the surrounding world, which prove inescapable for human society. What is this responsibility? What is its basis? How does it develop it and how far does it extend? These are some of the questions that we are looking at in the book, Semiotic Animal. Um, so um, we, we have worked a lot on, yes, uh, Seabiot's critique of anthropocentrism um, um, uh, uh, concerning anthroposemiotics, uh, which is no, lo no longer understood, understood as converging with general semiotics. So uh, anthrose anthroposemiotics is a part of semiotics. Uh, therefore, general semiotics uh, is far broader as a science than how it was originally conceived, influenced in, um, in particular uh, by Ferdinando Saussure's general linguistics. Um, semiotic studies, unintentional, unintentional signs. In fact, we have um, uh, Massimo Bonfantini, who is uh, who was a major Peirce scholar in Italy, uh, describes the development of uh, semiotic studies across the 20th century, um, identifying three main phases, and he calls them the, the phase of semiotics of decodification or code semiotics or equal exchange semiotics. Follow, followed by semiotics of signification, and then the third phase, semiotics of interpretation or of significance. So here we're alluding to the evolution of semiotic studies across the um, uh, 20th century as it moves from looking at um, um, referring to linguistics and to the verbal sign as a model uh, and to uh, even more uh, tightly, let's say, let's say to, uh, to intentional communication. So intentional, social, verbal communication. Um, now, uh, it was soon clear that this model could not be used as a general model for sign activity. Uh, and as we move on, uh, there, be, uh, there is um, sharpened awareness of the importance of unintentional signs for communication. And therefore we have uh, work by uh, Roland Barthes, but uh, um, Sigmund Freud, uh, who looks at the interpretation of dreams, uh, which means to look at the enormous importance of uh, unintentional uh, signs in signification. Uh, 
Um, and of course, Charles Peirce had already um, worked on the darks of what he calls the dark side of consciousness. He um, is claiming that the so-called dark side of consciousness, uh, what we would call the unconscious, was the main part of um, consciousness and communication. So then we move into the third phase, according to Massimo Bonfantini's description, so-called interpretation semiotics, or better um, significant semiotics, simply because interpretation is involved in all phases of semiotic studies. Uh, and in this third phase, there is a clear return, clear recovery of Persian semiotics, uh, certainly in Italy. Um, so the first phase, as as um, Sibioc um, uh, evidenced, is limited uh, severely limited by glottocentric and phonocentric tendencies. Um, so, verbal, uh, verbal signs, therefore, are clearly not uh, autonomous. Uh, with this critique of anthropocentrism and critique of glottocentricism, uh, verbal signs are clearly not, well, communication is clearly not uh, solely um, a question of verbal communication. Um, the importance of nonverbal communication is evidence and the dependency, as I was saying, of verbal communication upon uh, nonverbal signs. So to get free from the anthropocentric and glottocentric perspective as it has characterized semiotics generally, implies to take other sign systems into account beyond those specific to mankind. And so this is where Tom Sebiot is very, very attentive to the life sciences, to biology. Uh, let's not forget that uh, Charles Morris, his master, his teacher, uh, had already looked, uh, searched in the language of biology uh, to uh, develop his own semiotic terminology. And so this is a lesson, uh, an occurrence, let's say in science studies that Tom C. Leop develops. Um, yes, I, I refer to, we refer here to Tom C. Biot's, um essay, The Evolution of Semiosis involved, uh, which was published in the, uh, the work uh, edited by Posner, Robring and C. Biot. Um, where Tom Sibiot connects uh, various branches of semiotics to the different spheres of semiosis um, in the super kingdoms and uh, uh, presents the specificity of uh, semiosis in the human world in terms of modeling devices and language. Um, this observation is based on the fact that it is virtually certain for Tom Sibioc that Homo ab abilis was originally endowed with language, but not speech. Sibioc's distinction between language and speech corresponds even if roughly to the distinction between cognition and sprache drawn by, drawn by Müller in his 1987 book, uh, on evolution, cognition, and language. Uh, so this is a, 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 an absolute, for us, a turning point, a fundamental claim in Thomas C. Biot's, uh, work on language and uh, communication. Um, the fact that homo habilis uh, is specified by language, whereby language is understood, uh, not verbal language, but um, a special kind of modeling device. Um, he says with, in dialogue with the biologists that um, all life forms, certainly animal life forms are endowed with a modeling device which conditions our umwelt. Uh, but then at a certain point in evolution, uh, something very special happens to hominids. Uh, that is, their modeling device acquires uh, syntactics, ars combinatori, we could do, we, we could say with Leibniz. And this 
marks the beginning of a new course in evolution uh, in hominids uh, leading up to what we are today. Uh, the characteristic being, as I said, syntactics, uh, as combinatoria, uh, therefore this uh, a very uh, high degree capacity for creativity, innovation, uh, which we also develop uh, in the, uh, with our semioethics in the sense of the capacity for responsibility, responsibility. So in this context, uh, this is where we uh, were looking at um, um, Tom Sebiok's hybrid, his, his love of hybrid jokes. Uh, he in fact, um, 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 published in his 200, uh, 2001 book, Global Semiotics, the chapter called Intersemiotic Inter Transmutations, a genre of hybrid jokes. Um, so here where, you know, the, this is the context, his critique of anthropocentrism, his critique of glottocentrism, showing how uh, the verbal as well is dependent upon nonverbal. So hybrid, the characteristic of hybrid jokes is that they uh, need uh, images uh, or other signs. They resort to other signs to uh, tell the whole story, to complete the story. Verbal signs are not enough. Uh, so um, in fact, uh, we, trans we published this uh, brief article by Tom Sebi on hybrid jokes in Italian, uh, translated by me into Italian, uh, in the first of uh, three volumes um, dedicated to the question of translation. Uh, I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, the first volume was, was titled La Traduzione, Translation. So uh, we present this paper on hybrid jokes by uh, Tom Sebiok. Um, and the problem was immediate, um, how to translate all this, if not through images. Uh, and so Tom Sebiok uh, sent Luciano Poncio a series of uh, photographs, uh, which Luciano then uh, translated into uh, the vignette, some of which you, um, which you, uh, which um, Dario has shown us. Will um, you show the photos? We'll show you the photographs. Hmm. And these are, there is a, a lovely set of photographs by Tom, by Jean, Amica Seabrook, and also Erika. It was a family affair, um, which he presents in English, of course, in global, in global semiotics. Okay, that's in Lugano. The, the photographs that he sent. Ah, la pagina 5, sì. Vabbè. Aspetta, una, fai vedere sopra? Faccio, ah, sì, no, no, era quello, era quello, sì. So the, in this photograph, uh, there's a joke about the um, photographer who uh, asks the people to be photographed to smile. So in English, we say cheese. Uh, this is a, a Danish ph photographer, um, and instead of asking everybody to say cheese, he asked them to say cheese in Danish. So, favorite de la photo. So, this is the, um, eh? si, no la prossima. So, uh, this is the result. The, uh, I don't know how to pronounce, pronounce it in, in it's an uh, ost uh, for cheese in Danish. Um, and then the next, vediamo le baguette. And this is the other, the other hybrid joke. An American tourist uh, asks a Frenchman for directions to a hotel. Uh, and so to answer, this is the Frenchman with the baguettes under his armpits. And so to answer, he hands the baguettes over to the American tourist. And let's have a look at the next photograph, Dario. 
there you go in order to say i don't know so and the and these were all drawn by luciano poi vediamo che altro and then there was another hybrid joke oh this is the cat we've already seen this one this is the cat before the car ran over him <laughs> e poi the cat Here we go. And this is the cat um, after he was run over. Va bene. Uh, Dario has already mentioned these to you. There we go. So this is the, this, yes. Uh, this is when he was frightened, the cat before he was run over and he was terrified. Okay. Uh, the question was, uh, was, was the cat that the, uh, driver had run over the, uh, this old woman's cat, this old woman's cat, or not? Anyway, so hybrid hybrid jokes uh, showing the dependency between verbal and nonverbal signs. Right, let's have a look. So, um, as I said, this uh, we published this paper in the first of the Atenos of, of the first of three volumes of Atanor dedicated to uh, the question of translation. Um, and so um, this was a, a, an interesting pro, an, um, a project on translation viewed from a global semiotic perspective. Um, the question of translation investigated in the context of global semiotics has led to a new understanding of what is implied in the translation process itself and of the sciences that study translation beyond anthropocentric, glottocentric and phonocentric uh, limitations. Um, I've already mentioned the three volumes dedicated to this project. The second was called Trasegni, Between Signs, and the third, Lo Stesso Altro, uh, The Same Other. And in these three volumes, um, we have contributions from uh, various disciplines, from uh, translation experts to literary uh, literary. Uh, criti crit uh, criticism, uh, philosophy, uh, biology, the medical sciences, and so forth. Um, the, the contributions were in various language, mainly English, Italian, and French. So what I did was select just the English papers and uh, presented them in another volume, which was uh, published in 203 with Rodopi uh, in a volume titled uh, Translation, Translation. Um, so uh, in its most obvious sense, translation concerns verbal texts in their relation between different languages. But even if we remain within the sphere of verbal signs, translation does not only concern the relation between one language and another, but also that between the different languages forming the same language, since all languages are endowed to a lesser or greater degree with internal plurilingualism. Um, the fact is that this global approach to translation uh, helps underline the, uh, the very intersemiotic nature of meaning, uh, meaning uh, in verbal language. It, meaning is always intersemiotic. Um, Understood in such terms, the study of translation clearly cannot be restricted to linguistics, but necessarily involves semiotics, the general science of science. But even before being an object of semiotics, translation is a sign operation, not only in the obvious sense that translation occurs among verbal sign systems, but also in the sense that it cannot be reduced to the verbal linguistic system. Uh, translation involves the science sphere in its entirety. Where there is interpretation, there is translation. Um, the sign is in translation, uh, simply looking at the dynamics of the relationship between one sign and the sign that interprets it. Interpretation, the interpretant is possible in uh, the relation to the preceding sign, and this may be considered as a translation uh, relationship. So the sign uh, is alive 
uh, when it is the object of interpretation, and this occurs in the process, infinite unending process of semiosis, which is an interpretational, uh, translational process. Um, proposed in such terms, it becomes a question of verifying whether the signs referred to in this extended sense of translation are only human signs, those belonging to the sphere of anth anthroposemiosis. And of course, we know that that is not the case. But the first problem concerns whether translation is limited to human signs and therefore to general linguistics as intended by Charles Morris. And when I say general linguistics as intended by Charles Morris, this is also an interesting uh, aspect of, of uh, Morris's approach to semiotics. The fact that uh, he uh, proposes a distinction between general linguistics and linguistics to core, saying that the object of linguistics uh, is verbal language, uh, whereas general linguistics should be reserved um, to all languages, verbal and nonverbal. So um, general linguistics will look at all languages, according to Morris, and uh, linguistics, verbal languages. Uh, in fact, differently from the linguistics of the linguists, general linguistics, um, as intended by Morris, does not deal with verbal languages alone, but rather with all human languages, with all human languages. And this is where the connection with um, CBOX um, theory uh, is very interesting. Uh, remember that CBOX uh, mm, denominates human modeling, human primary modeling, uh, which is a syntactic device, uh, language, he calls it language. So uh, where there is syntactics, uh, we have language, uh, signs uh, relating to language in the human world. Uh, and therefore language is a term that is um, appropriately reserved uh, to communication or for communication in the human world, um, not extendable to communication in the other realms of uh, life uh, um, and vital communication. Um, a semiotic approach to the problem of translation, if we must identify fields and boundaries, should not restrict the translational process to verbal language, but extend it to all human languages, verbal and nonverbal, to the anthroposemiotic sphere in its entirety. Um, yes, and I've, uh, yes, I'll just mention talking about translation in this case, interlingual translation. Um, I think Dadia showed that we we actually in Bari translated uh, all of six books uh, by uh, Thomas Sibiok uh, from uh, English into Italian, uh, which include Il, um, the signed and his mass and its masters in 1985. Uh, I think I am a verb that was translated in 1990. And then um, um, an eye view of America, US semiotics, an eye view from the center, which is about the development of semiotics in, uh, in the USA. And then um, another volume in Italian, which does not have an equivalent uh, in, um, in English, uh, a collection of essays that we assembled here in Italian. And the title is, how come comunicano gli animali che non parlano? How animals that do not speak communicate, or how animals communicate those animals that do not speak, therefore that do not have verbal signs, that cannot uh, process verbal signs. Obviously, uh, communication occurs uh, not only within not only intraspecific communication within the species, but interspecific we, uh, with us. Uh, interspecific in the non-human animal world, but also interspecific uh, in the sense of communication between non-human animals and human animals. Uh, so the question is, if communication does not occur through verbal language, 
How does it occur? And the answer obviously is through signs. We share, we share signs through semiosis, but not through verbal signs. Um, and uh, Tom often made a point of underlining this because, um, because of the insistence in uh, countries like, uh, uh, like America of um, uh, financing with enormous sums of money, experiments, experiment even in recent times, experiments to show that non-human animals can communicate, can communicate through verbal signs, even after, let's say, um, all this research that has been done on communication and on the specificity of communication uh, according to the different animal-human species. Um, so now I'd like to, yes, talking about the semiotic animal, because I like to. Oh, sì. E quelli che ti ho le foto che ti ho mandato? Augusto wants to show some uh, book covers. Eh? Salute. <laughs> che cosa stiamo facendo? Oh. Oh, this is, Dario showed this before, Semiotica del Leo. Uh, Tom actually mentions this particular project in the introduction to global semiotics. Um, he mentions this book. I don't remember whether it was published before or after his death. Tu ti ricordi? But anyway, he mentions this uh, in the introduction to global semiotics, the project on the semiotics uh, of the self. And in okay. uh, and this this photo, which uh, Dario has already showed, this was a book uh, that began with uh, Marcel Danesi. Um, this was um, the body in the sign, um, a book uh, that um, the which I translated into Italian and then added a, an essay by myself and one by Augusto. And so we published this other book, Semiotica Globale, in 2004. Va bene, va bene. Okay. So, che uh, cos'è? Va bene. Allora, um, so let's have a look at the semiotic impl implications from Sibiok's distinction between the semiotic animal and the semiotic animal. Um, so that the human animal is a semiotic animal means that humans are the only animals capable of conscious awareness and of responsibility. Uh, the human being is responsible for, for semiosis over the planet, which means to say for life over the terrestrial globe. And so this is um, an issue that we have been working on for many years. Um, we in fact um, introduced the term etosemiotica in the early 80s uh, with Augusto, uh, and then telosemiotica and teleosemiotica. Uh, and then we decided on semioetica, semioethics, uh, which in Italian moves the E in the word uh, semiotica forward. So from semiotica or symptomatology to semioetica. Um, and therefore um, semiotics and ethics. Uh, and the whole point is to recover also um, the lesson imparted by the Greek uh, physicians concerning uh, the need to uh, listen to semiosis, listen to health. I mean, they were physicians and they were interested in symptoms um, learning to read symptoms uh, in order to safeguard uh, human life. Uh, today, with semioethics, we insist on the, we underline uh, the need for us to recover that lesson um, and not limit ourselves simply to describing 
uh, human sign activity, but um, of uh, the need to develop a critical attitude, uh, the need of developing awareness of the presence of values in signs in the human world. Uh, signs are not neutral. Uh, signs are carriers of values always. Uh, signs carry values, carry stereotypes, stereotypes um, and uh, views of the world. Um, and so in 2003, we published the book Semioetica. This was a book that John Dealey uh, was very, very interested in uh, seeing in English translation. But there's always so much work, I never got around to it. But then um, Paul Cobley uh, invited us in English to um, write an essay on semioethics for his Routledge Semiotics Dictionary. Um, the edition that was published in 2010. So in that dictionary, the Routledge Companion to Semiotics, uh, there is an essay on semioethics, uh, which wasn't in the 2001 edition. Um, so thank you always to Paul Cobley and his editorial genius, I must say. Um, so, yes. Um, um, one of the come? No, vabbè, poi dopo magari. One of the uh, sources of semioethics is uh, Victoria Welby's significs, and I like to mention Victoria Welby simply because um, uh, this is an author that Ferruccio Rossilandi had signaled to us in the early eighties, uh, but. Um, Thomas, uh, Tom Seabrook was very, very interested in, in my work on Victoria Welby. He encouraged it um, and also wanted me to publish a monograph on Victoria Welby and her significance uh, as a special issue of the journal Semiotica. But then uh, he died and this monograph became a, um, a monster monograph. And so again, it was Paul Cobley uh, who uh, uh, published my book on Welby, uh, which is not only a book on Welby, but also uh, by Welby, because in it I collect uh, quite a, a massive amount of published and particularly unpublished papers, correspondence, etc. Tom Sebiot was, uh, anyway, so uh, thanks to Paul, uh, we published this volume in 2009 in the series that he directs with Mouton de Greuter. Um, but Tom had already uh, published an article with me, inviting me to collaborate on women in semiotics. And this was an article dedicated to uh, Imengard uh, Rauch. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, R-A-U-C-H. And this article he also published in his book, Global Semiotics. So, see, Ned Sajoche. So, semioethics, um, the, the term semioethics, uh, as far as our English publications goes, appears in my 200, in 208 again, uh, with the American Journal of Semiotics, the issue dedicated to the CBIOC Fellow Award, which I received uh, in that year. Um, and which was also uh, evidenced by John Dealey in his introduction, uh, talking about Tom's, recalling Tom's interest, um, Tom's interest in uh, significance uh, and therefore eventually semioethics. Um, uh, Dealey in that introduction also recalls another project that was conceived with Tom Seabiok and published in Semiotica. Uh, and this is uh, the, uh, again, um, uh, a project developed in the light of global semiotics entitled Signs and Light, Illuminating Paths in the Semiotic Web. This is a project that we worked on in one of, uh, during one of Tom's visits here in Bari. 
Uh, it was published with semiot in Semiotica in 2001. We had lots of projects going uh, when, uh, when Tom died, really untimely death. Um, anyway, this project, Signs and Light, in Semiotica was preceded by um, um, a monographic issue uh, by Augusto Ponzio of the of Athanod, of the Athena or Athena series, um, dedicated to Luce light, and that was published in 1997. Things are connected, but of course, you know, when we're in the uh, in the realm of publications and the publishing world, there are delays and things are slower than what we anticipate. Uh, but these are projects that walk together, that somehow move together. So um, another book that, uh, that Tom Sibiot promoted uh, was a book by Augusto Poncio and myself called Semiotics Unbounded. Uh, Semiotics Unbounded, I think, uh, um, uh, interpretive routes through the open network of signs. Um, that was a book also that uh, Tom Sibiot promoted. And in that book, there is a chapter, uh, there is a section on Mikhail Bakhtin. In that book, we have the, 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 uh, the first part of that book presents a series of masters of the sign. And there's uh, Umberto Eco. Ce l'abbiamo la copertura? Vabbè. Io non la vedo, ma non importa. A section on uh, Umberto Eco, another section on, oh, first on Purse, and then on Victoria Welby. Uh, and then uh, Umberto Eco, and then Ferruccio Rossi Landi, uh, and Mikhail Bakhtin. So uh, Augusta has worked, Augusto Ponzio um, has worked all his life, obviously, uh, I think we all know, on Mikhail Bakhtin, translating him from Russian into Italian, editing works and writing monographs on him. Um, reading Bactine and Peirce in light of each other, uh, also throwing in Emmanuel Levinas. So uh, Bactine is an important figure from the 20th century, um, not generally taken into, consider in, into due consideration in semiotic or philosophical circles. Um, he, uh, given that he has been assigned incorrectly to the sphere of literary criticism mostly, and yet um, it was back to him himself who would say, I am a philosopher. In, in Russian, he would say philologist, but um, uh, translating it meant I am a philosopher. Uh, this, um, uh, his conversations with Duvakin uh, appeared in Italian, uh, translated uh, by Augusto with one of our collaborators uh, from the Russian. Wow. And that, uh, that book appeared uh, in 2008, um, Conversations with Dovakin, where Bakhtin says, I am a philosopher. Uh, that, um, those conversations are now uh, available in English in um, a critical edition uh, by one Slav Gracev, I think his name is. Uh, a recent, that's a recent edition in English. Um, and then, given that Muddy Soul is here, a homage to Muddy Soul. Uh, who is involved with promoting the translation of the Bactin uh, Dubakin volume in uh, Brazilian, in Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese, correct, Madison? Um, so Bactin says, I'm a philosopher, and therefore his reflections belong to the realm of philosophy. Bakhtin also qualifies his thoughts in terms of semiotics and metalinguistics. An important focus in his writings is his critique of the reduction of communicative processes to relations between the sender and the receiver, between langue and parole, as established improperly by Saussure, or perhaps better the Saussurians, because we know now that uh, Saussure is being reread thanks to um, all the research, archival research, uh, bringing to light papers uh, before they had been misinterpreted to an extent by his, um, by some of his followers. 
Um, so a critique of uh, the reduction, uh, this is Bakhtin who critiques the reduction of communication to intentional communication, to the relation between sender and receiver. And this is, uh, this is to be connected, in fact, uh, it can be associated to Tom Seabiok's own approach uh, when he critiques glottocentricism and, and so forth. And to Massimo Bonfantini and his uh, critique of uh, semiotics uh, understood as code, code semiotics. So we're showing, Augusto wants to show this photograph of uh, Tom Sibiok with uh, John Dealey and uh, with Lucia Santaella and John Dealey's, Dealey's wife, um, Brooke, Brooke Williams, uh, alongside Tom. Um, so, Non ce, io non ce l'ho qui in eco. Beh, eh? cioè, Hai dato tu? Sì. sì. Um, so, uh, from our point of view, particularly interesting is Bakhtin's insistence on the question of responsibility uh, since his very early writings. Um, he talks about moral philosophy. So, Bakhtin established a very close relationship between signed and otherness, alterity. Uh, signs flourish in the relation with others and require um, a responsible standpoint towards uh, semiosis to, and, and therefore towards others. Um, responsibility in, in uh, Bakhtin's uh, universe of discourse is responsibility without alibis, without the possibility of evasion which is the kind of responsibility he um, uh, juxtaposes, compares to what he calls relative responsibility, which is responsibility connected to um, uh, identity, to the self understood as closed identity. Uh, and here I have to recall Charles Morris again. Charles Morris um, as Ferruccio Rossilandi who had introduced Morris to the Italian intellectual scene, translating him and writing monographs on him, uh, observes that Morris uh, distinguishes, well, uh, has a series of books of a technical nature uh, in, the, uh, in, in semiotics, and then a series of other books that looks at values. Uh, Morris was interested in the relationship between and thematized the relationship between semiotics and axiology. And so therefore a series of books like um, The Open Self uh, but, and others, um, but The Open Self is a book he wrote in, he published in 1948, uh, which was after the Second World War and when the uh, McCarthyism uh, in America uh, was making itself felt and we were building the Berlin Wall, going towards the Cold War. Um, so the question of responsibility, um, it is not incidental that Bakhtin also uh, was interested in the biological sciences. Uh, he actually published an article uh, in 1926 entitled uh, Vitalism. So we, have, we also have this, uh, co uh, this in common between authors like Seabiok, uh, Morris, Bakhtin, even though obviously Bakhtin had never encountered Morris or Seabiok uh, in real life. Uh, the open, opening to biology, the relationship between biology and philosophy, biology and, and semiotics, um, Bakhtin, as I was saying, published the um, article Vitalism, uh, but not uh, under his own name. He published it with the name of a friend of his, the biologist Kanave, and, and he did this uh, because he wanted credibility. He, um, the, and the article was actually published uh, in a, a specialized journal of biology. Um, uh, 
Another book that Bakhtin uh, publishes, he, he, he's a philosopher, publishes two monographs, and both monographs are dedicated to figures in literary criticism, uh, in, in literature, literature, uh, in literary writing. One is Dostoevsky, the other is Rabelais, uh, François Rabelais. Uh, and uh, Bakhtin, the philosopher, looks at François Rabelais and his literary production, um, thematizing in particular, in philosophical terms, the grotesque body and the carnival, carnival and the grotesque body. He does that through Rabelais. Uh, and the whole point there too is to show uh, and underline and insist on the condition of inevitable intercorporeality uh, among all spheres of life across the planet. Um, the inevitability therefore of the other, the other that cannot be escaped, the other that cannot be evaded, the other uh, which we have to deal with whether we like it or not. Um, so we're looking at this condition of intercorporeal interconnection and interdependency among all living individuals, including human beings, in organic and non-organic processes throughout, throughout the entire universe. And this is where we connect back to uh, with um, Thomas Sebiok's Global Semiotic Purview. Semiotics understood not only as a science, but as an orientation perspective by semioethics arises and develops in the field of anthroposemiosis. Therefore, it is connected with the umwelt, a species specific modeling device, what we have called language, language, but not verbal language, proper to human beings, a primary modeling device endowing humans, unlike all other animals, with the special capacity to produce a great plurality of different worlds, whether real or imaginary. This is the privilege um, of the human animal, the semiotic animal, this capacity uh, for imagining uh, an infinite number of different worlds. The implication from our point of view is that human beings are not condemned to remain imprisoned in a world as it is uh, to forms of vulgar realism. Semiotics is in fact, uh, is a fact of the human species. Here the term semiotics is used as a, like um, following Sebiok, as a synonym of metasemiosis. This is um, um, a species specific characteristic of the human animal, semiotics, metasemiosis. Uh, therefore, semiotics is a fact of the human species. But the possibility of its effective realization is a fact of the historical social order, of course. Our Umwelt is a historical social product in addition to a biosemiotical endowment. So that any possibility of transformation or alternative hypotheses finds its effective grounding and starting point, its term of confrontation, the materials necessary for critique and programming in historical social reality, as it gradually evolves and is distinguished from merely biological material. Uh, and so again, uh, we have this biosemiosical endowment, which is syntactics, but then of course, which determines the capacity for imagining other worlds. Um, and we relate this to the question of responsibility, uh, underlining the fact that of course, at this level of discourse, we are entering into the historical social uh, world uh, inhabited by human beings. Uh, and therefore, this is where uh, the semiotics and ideology, uh, the, the connection between semiotics and ideology is fundamental. This is where the work by Ferruccio Rossilandi uh, and uh, authors like Adam Schaff, 
uh, which have been developed by Augusto Ponzio here in Bari is fundamental. Uh, the need to be aware, as I was saying before, that in the historical social world, the human world, signs are carriers of values, of ideologies, therefore also of prejudice and stereotypes. Um, and this is where philosophy with Bakhtin um, and others, of course, uh, as critique is fundamental uh, in uh, underlining the need for um, reviewing with responsibility um, the process of, um, uh, how do you say it, uh, anthropization of the planet, how man is leaving his imprint, man in the sense of anthropos, is leaving his imprint on the planet, on life, over the entire planet and the responsibilities involved and the capacity that we have uh, of reviewing, of critiquing, and therefore of making changes. From this point of view, global semiotics is also the projection, I think, uh, of uh, hope, hope for the future. A global and detotalizing approach to semiotics demands openness to the other, the extreme capacity for listening to the other. Therefore, it presupposes the capacity for dialogic interconnection with the other. Accordingly, we propose an approach to semiotics that privileges the tendency towards detotalization. Uh, rather than total, rather than totalization, um, the point is to understand that global semiotics that studies global semiosis evidences the condition of alterity, the condition of alterity in, uh, of difference. Um, global semiotics shows how the totality is made of many multiple uh, subtotalities that are interrelated and interdependent on what? Upon each other, upon the other. Um, accordingly, we propose an approach to semiotics that privileges the tendency towards detotalization rather than totalization. Otherness opens the totality to infinity or to infinite semiosis, leading beyond the cognitive order or the symbolic order into the ethical order, understood as implying infinite involvement with the other, therefore responsibility towards the other. Um, I'm just noticing that it's um, 20 past five and Paul uh, has to go, has to leave, I think, at half past five. Correct, Paul, can you hear me? So, um, if you like, I mean, we could we could quit here uh, or continue as you wish, but perhaps stop here uh, for eventual potremmo fermare qua. Sono le 5 e 20. Sì, possiamo. Oh, devo andare lì. Sì, sì, sì. Oh, and Augusto wants to say something. But yes. that's good. You don't you don't need me. You can continue oh, yes, in, indefinitely, do. interminably. We want you. you. We want you more than need you. Oh. That's <laughs> kind. <laughs> Augusto wants to say something. Uh, sì, sì. E io parlerò okay, so. di alcune cose di, di Tom. Uh, la, sua grande, la sua grande umanità. So Augusto wants to say a few words about Tom uh, and mentions his great humanity. Il suo grande um, spirito umoristico. His, Yes, his, uh, uh, his taste for humor. He was. Yes. La sua sottile ironia. His the sense of irony, his subtle sense of irony. Eh, io um, mi sono laureato in filosofia con Giuseppe Semerari. So Augusto graduated in philosophy with, the, uh, with Giuseppe Semerari here in Bari. Nella mia tesi volevo occuparmi di uh, relazione interpersonale. And Augusto wanted to devote his thesis to the interpersonal relationship. E il professor Semerari mi indicò mh, 
come punto di riferimento eh, il libro di Emmanuel Levinas. So, Professor Semerari, uh, total gusto to read Emmanuel Levinas. Totalité et infini. Totality and infinity. Quindi Levinas è il mio punto di partenza. So Levinas was Augusto's starting point. Levinas ha avuto un ruolo importante nella mia formazione. Uh, and Levinas has a very important role in Augusto's uh, intellectual formation development. Ebbene, Sibioc non, poteva, non aveva <ride> simpatia per quasi nessuno della filosofia francese. <ride> Sibioc was not interested eh, hardly in anybody from the French philosophical scene. E, e neppure della, della psicanalisi francese, Lacan, per esempio. Yes, he didn't sympathize with the French psychoanalysis, non, Lacan. Non dava molta importanza all'esistenzialismo, Sartre. Wasn't interested in existentialism, Sartre. E soprattutto non poteva sopportare Levinas. And he couldn't bear Levinas. <laughs> ecco, questa era la mia situazione. So this is Augusto's situation. Fra Levinas... Between Levinas non and sopportato da Sibioc, whom Sibioc didn't e, appreciate, e il grande Thomas Sibioc. And the great Thomas Sibioc. Eh, questa è la mia difficoltà. And that was Augusto's difficulty. Di Levinas, Sibioc, sapete che cosa diceva? Do you know what Sibioc would say about Levinas? In vino Levinas. In vino Levinas. <laughs> Instead of in vino veritas. In vino levinas. Uh, per dire che era un po' ubriaco. So he was, to say that he was a bit drunk. Beh, insomma, io ho, mi vanto di, aver, di essere riuscito a mettere insieme, a collegare Levinas e Thomas Sibio. So uh, Augusto is proud that he, was, that he succeeded in connecting Uh, Levinas and Thomas Sibiok. Emmanuel Levinas mm. and Thomas Sibiok. Mm. Emmanuel Levinas and Thomas Sibiok. Levinas uses the term ethical, ethical. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Levinas uses the term ethics. Per indicare l'intrigo. To, uh, to indicate the intrigue. Che lega l'io e l'altro that bonds the i to the other che lega l'io mm. e il resto del mondo uh, that bonds i to the rest of the world e chiama etica questo intrigo he calls this intrigue or entanglement etica ethics la concezione di Sibioc della semiotica della semiotica globale non è diverso da, questo, da questa visione, da questo punto di vista. But he says that from this point of view, um, Tom Sibiok's vision of global semiotics is not in, any different because he's underlining this condition of entanglement, intrigue, of uh, interrelatedness. Noi siamo collegati con il resto del mondo, so are... non soltanto del mondo umano, ma del mondo vivente in generale. So we are interconnectedness, interconnected inextricably with the, the rest of the world, not only the human, not only human life, but the whole of life. Anche per Sibio che c'è un intrico e, e questo intrico comporta inevitabilmente una responsabilità. So for Sibioc as well, uh, there is this condition of intrigue or entanglement, and this condition uh, involves responsibility. Ebbene, nella espressione che ormai andiamo usando e in qualche maniera anche altri usano, semioetica, c'è l'unificazione della sem semiotica globale di Thomas Sibiok 
e dell'etica nel senso di Levinas. So in, in the term semioethics, um, as we have conceived it, uh, we find we have both um, Levinas' understanding of ethics and Thomas C. Bjork's Global Semiotics. They're both in that uh, notion, semioethics. Sicché l'espressione di C. Bjork in vino le Levinas. <laughs> so, so that C. Bjork's expression in vino Levinas. Associando Levinas e Veritas. Uh, associating Levinas and Veritas. Adesso viene confermato. Is now confirmed. Levinas e C. Bjork possono essere dal mio punto di vista in collegamento. From, my, from his point, from Augusto's point of view, uh, Levinas and Sibio uh, can be connected. E io credo che se Sibio mi sta sentendo in questo momento, well, I think if, if he's listening to me now, se Sibio, Tom sta, mi sta ascoltando, Tom is listening to him, sarà contento. He, he will be happy to hear it. E sarà d'accordo. And, and will agree with him, with Augusto. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, bene. Va bene, allora io direi che possiamo finire là, Paul. È andato via. No, sta qua, Paul. Ah, Paul, yeah. ok, that, that's fine for us. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs> grazie. A te, mm. grazie a te. Uh -huh. Per tutto quello che hai fatto, per tutto quello che fai. He's thanking you for everything you've done and everything you do. E Continue. quando vieni a Bari non ti farò trovare le zanzare. <laughs> <laughs> ok, so Dario, if you round off, I've got to go meet a PhD student now. Um, good to see everybody. Take care. I, I, forse devi spegnere. Sì, se ci sono. Sì, se ci sono. Sì, se ci sono. Sì, se ci sono. Ok. Yes, I want to, I want to, to thank uh, Professor Petrilli and Professor, Professor Ponzio. And uh, I ask uh, if someone uh, a question or something to, to add to say about uh, this speech or we can uh, greet each other if anyone ah, okay there is a uh, no S yes there is a uh, Sally Ann Ness Thank you. Speak. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Um, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, yes, yeah, very well. Everything okay? Yeah. Thank you so much for that uh, wonderful overview and um, uh, such a helpful start for those of us who may not have the familiarity with uh, all of these authors and the history of theory that underlies <clears throat> CBIOC. Um, I'm wondering if you have written or if there's a source uh, available that would clarify the relationship between semioethics as you um, presented it and uh, critical theory or Foucauldian uh, positions on critical theory, uh, particularly with regard to how power is understood from a semioethic uh, perspective and how your notion of semiotics might compare with Foucauldian semiotics? That's my question. Did, did, should I put it in the chat? Was it, are you not hearing me? Ma per, quanto, per quanto riguarda uh, Foucault, eh, ne, il, il, rapporto, il rapporto con le cose che andiamo dicendo c'è senz'altro per la critica che, fa, che, che Foucault fa nei, confor, nei confronti di ciò che lui chiama l'uso del corpo. Eh. E il modo con cui la corporeità 
i corpi sono considerati eh, attualmente. Uh, yes, he, um, uh, Augusto was saying that uh, you, we could, you could certainly read semioethics and Foucault together, uh, especially for what uh, Foucault has to say about the body and, and, and the politics of the, uh, of the body. Um, so, yeah. Foucault mette in discussione la concezione individualistica, separatistica dei, dei corpi. I corpi sono collegati, sì. ma sono collegati non in funzione del profitto, non in funzione di un'economia quale è quella della globalizzazione. Ecco, da questo punto di vista la nostra semioetica e il punto di vista di Foucault si incontrano. C'è un saggio di Susan Pedrilli su Foucault da questo punto di vista. Yes, um, um, Foucault um, critiques the condition of separation among bodies. Uh, and this is where we, uh, we dialogue, you know, where, where semioethics certainly does encounter Foucault um, and global semiotics, if you like, because the, the whole point is that global semiotics and semioethics uh, as a consequence um, uh, posits that uh, or makes a big point of the fact that there is no such thing as uh, separation and isolation. All bodies are interrelated. But this is something that uh, Peirce had already said very, very clearly. Uh, he says very, very clearly citing uh, Shakespeare, um, uh, man's gla glassy essence, that, um, that isolated man is a, uh, an illusion. Um, so, The uh, body is not separate from other bodies. The body is not, so it, there's a, um, a discussion therefore of the, the concept of individual, of individual. The individual does not mean to be separate from other bodies, from, um, from other human beings. Um, we should look at the individual um, in, in terms of singularity. The individual is um, the, each human being evolves in the relationship with others and evolves in the, di in the, in the dialectics between uh, community and singularity. Um, the fact of relating to others uh, does not uh, mean sacrificing singularity and uniqueness, uh, the singularity, the uniqueness of each one. The singularity and uniqueness of each one, the alterity, what Levinas would call absolute alterity, uh, does not uh, impede uh, the condition of interconnectivity. It's, there's a dialectics uh, or dialogics, if you like, um, that unites uh, and relates each single individual with the totality. Uh, with the community, and for this reason, uh, you see how any totality is always a detotalized totality, a totality made of a relationship among alterities, ongoing, dynamical, dialogical relationships among alterities. Um, and the concept of dialogism is interesting here too, because we're not talking about dialogue in, in any formal sense of exchange of rejoinders. That is only one, ex, one aspect of what we can understand by dialogism or dialogue. Uh, dialogism uh, is intercorporeality, uh, uh, inter is interconnectedness, is uh, vital to, to life. Uh, before and beyond dialogue understood as the exchange of rejoinders uh, between two interlocutors. Uh, and here, uh, remember again, Bakhtin, who says that we must reduce communication, in fact, to the mere simple exchange of messages between receiver, uh, emitter and receiver. So Foucault, uh, with his... Um, uh, critique of, of this way of conceiving the individual uh, is also working in the direction that we can relate to of uh, uh, evidencing the condition of intercorporeality and of critiquing therefore today's world, you know, today's 
global communication or communica uh, communication production world, which is based on the uh, on individuality, but in a reductive sense of the concept. Uh, Victoria Welby, already in the 19th century, had also criticized this conception, this bourgeois conception of individuality, as uh, which is um, uh, an egocentric, and um, she also says egocentric and short-sighted conception of individuality. Um, the fact is that we uh, relate to each other, each in one's singularity, uh, but uh, never, uh, never without the other. And this is what we have to deal with in, in one way or the other, the other. I don't know if that uh, satisfies your question. I, no, that, thank you. That's uh, extremely helpful. I, I'm still wondering if there are any publications that you produce that explicitly address Foucault. Uh, I, um, I think so. Look, I'm, I'm not sure, but probably, yes. I'm, I've got, I can't remember at the moment, but uh, I have written on Foucault, yes, uh, from the point of view of semioethics. Perhaps we can correspond and I'll... Thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. I'll let you know and send you something. Yeah. Thanks yeah. very much. There you go. Dear Milan. Sì, su mille piani, sì, definitely in Italian, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, 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 so. Uh, is there any other question to Professor Ponzo or Petrilli? <laughs> no, I think no. Va bene, allora salutiamo. So. Thank you for your participation, and uh, I think this is the last, no? The, 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 the last, uh, sorry. The, the last, no, no, uh, uh, there's another sem web webinar on the uh, yes, 15th yes. of December, yes. China. With Hong, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Si. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Dario, devi spegnere. Che, che dice, c'è Cosimo. Eh, Cosimo, ci sei? Cosimo Caputo? No, non c'è più, va bene. No. Ok. All right, so um, Augusto would like to say goodbye to everybody. Saluta. Devo salutare. <laughs> uh, it's a pleasure, it's a pleasure to be together. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Ciao. Uh, and hopefully there will be other occasions of um, being together. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Riusciamo.